Alright, what is going on guys? Joe here from Ankle Athletics. Just wanted to make this quick video doing a Q&A. I posted on my Ankle Athletics group on Facebook just asking for some questions that I think you guys would benefit from. So, kind of getting right into it, I have a timestamp below or I should have a timestamp below with all of the questions so you can kind of just click on them if you want to skip around. If you want to watch the full video, then thank you very much for watching the full video. But anyways, I've been meaning to do this video and it's time to get right into it. So the first question. Um, what is my favorite cheat meal? And this is from Dominic Sterling, my dude. Um, my favorite cheat meal or unhealthy meal, and I don't really have cheat meals, I guess. I honestly eat something that I enjoy um, pretty much once a day. I'm eating something, either I'm eating out or I'm having something at home that I would say somebody might consider unhealthy and that just might be like a pop tart it might be a rice krispie treat a small one um, it might mean going to Panera it might mean whatever um, but my favorite unhealthy or cheat meal that someone would call a cheat meal would probably be either be pizza sushi which honestly sushi isn't even that bad um, or like Culver's burger so if you don't know what Culver's is look it up if you do know what Culver's is, you know what I'm talking about. So it would be like a double butter burger from Culver's, or just like a pizza from honestly anywhere, or a good rainbow roll, sushi roll. So that would be my, my go-to. Next question, my girl Stacy. What up, Stacy? Um, I find myself sleepy during the day, um, about two hours after I get to work. Um, how do I stay energized without coffee or soda? So I'm not really sure. I know you don't really like caffeine in general. Speaking of, I still got to send you that pre-workout, but things like that. So I would say I definitely take a fair share of caffeine. I'm pretty much a caffeine addict, so I can't really attest as much. But what I would say just directly it would just be your sleep, like we talked about. That's going to be number one. So if you feel like you're getting tired, you need to look at if you're getting seven to nine hours of sleep consistently. And, and consistently is the big thing because if you get it one night in a row but two nights before that you were sleeping only four hours, that's going to have an effect um, even thereafter, kind of lingering effect. So sleep is the number one thing with that. It's so, so important, especially if you're not someone who likes caffeine or using any sort of stimulants like that. But otherwise, if you don't like caffeine, um, I would say the big thing would be getting proper sleep. And then other than that, making sure you're hydrated, making sure you're fueled with proper nutrients. That's all going to have effect on just your energy levels in general. So the sleep is the big one, though. Next question. What is my biggest or who, I guess, would be my biggest inspiration in the fitness community my biggest inspiration really kind of to get started was Raymond Cuerdo I believe I'm saying his last name right um, I should probably know that if he's my inspiration right but um, the online coach if you're familiar with him he is someone who is not only just someone who's successful in the community owns a gym um, but he's also a family guy he's got kids um, he's older he's been at this for a long time he's in his 30s so it's kind of cool to not only see him build his career and build his businesses but also see his physique at such an age where not only is he kind of the same stature as me a shorter guy um, but he's also natural so um, it's just one of those things where he kind of fit the mold a little bit where I could kind of see myself liking doing what he's doing and it's kind of cool to be able to say that I'm now pretty much doing what he's doing maybe not at as a as such a successful level yet but I plan to get there so Raymond would be my biggest biggest sort of um, inspiration I would say in my original my favorite exercises for each muscle group so I'll kind of run through this pretty quickly so I'll start out with legs um, calves I guess you could say my calves aren't the greatest but um, any sort of leg press calf raise where you're already in like a seated leg press position um, I think they're just convenient and I just get a really good squeeze and stretch on the calf um, then moving up quads um, and legs in general I guess legs meaning hamstrings and um, quads squats um, barbell back squat number one for sure um, in general but if I had to break it down a little bit more so I would say um, compound exercise squats in general for just quads specifically like a closer stance and then from there I would say RDLs Romanian deadlift for the hamstrings and glutes posterior chain in general um, and then if I move up going to the back back I would say if I could just pick one exercise it would probably have to be pull-ups um, I would love to throw a row exercise in there just to build some thickness but if I had to just pick one I would say pull-ups um, and then other than that, I would say just some sort of rowing variation, probably a chest supported dumbbell row. Um, just such a great movement for isolation without taxing the lower back. 
um, chest supported dumbbell row for sure. Um, for the back, if I had to pick two, I guess that's I guess that's kind of cheating. But um, other than that, I would say for chest, just a bench press, probably a dumbbell incline if I had to pick one, just because. Um, just to get that upper upper pec and that upper chest going a little bit more, that bro science upper pec. Um, but uh, I would say probably dumbbell incline, but then again, you can't really replace the, the barbell flat bench just for the sheer amount of load you're able to put through. And just a lot of research says that the greater your one rep max on the bench press, um, specifically the bench press, it's interesting, um, the bigger the chest you'll have. So um, anyways, that's, again, I'm cheating a little bit, picking more than one. And then shoulders, I would say if I could just pick one exercise for my shoulders, not even including pressing movements, I would say lateral raises um, or upright rows in general um, and tons of different variations there, whether I'm doing dumbbells or cables, um, it really all depends, or even a machine lateral raise. And, oh, I guess biceps and triceps. So biceps, I would say if I could just pick one, it would be probably like a easy bar, um, like kind of a slanted angle curl with just like normal like curl bar. Um, that'll probably be my go-to just because you hit a little bit hit a little bit of each of each portion of the bicep there um, But then again, you got to have your place for your supinated palm up and your place for your, your hammer just to get the full development of the bicep um, But then again, I'm cheating again and um, Finally triceps I would say number one would just be some sort of like a push down so whether that be a cable push down um, or even like a, a machine dip, I would say it kind of would qualify as that. Something where you can overload the triceps, even like a close grip bench. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. I don't want to go too in depth with that. Maybe I'll make a separate video on that specifically. But um, besides that, the next question are my hobbies outside of fitness? That's a good one, I guess. So um, you could kind of consider me running. I've been starting to do more aerobic sort of um, long distance running, sort of endurance style running where I'm running like three plus miles. Um, still keeping it quick. Yesterday I ran three miles. It was really hot out. I ran three miles in just under an eight minute pace, which is pretty fast for me. Um, and uh, so I guess that would be kind of considered something outside of just the general lifting you see on this channel. Other than that, I like to do different things as far as um, outdoor stuff. I love going hiking. I love going fishing. Um, I love doing things like that, which if you scroll back on the channel, I have some fishing experiences on here, at least one of them with my dad. Uh, but otherwise, just things like that. I used to longboard a ton. That's something I definitely want to get back into. Um, but it kind of is... It's, fitness has definitely taken over a lot of my life, but I like to kind of at least get myself out there and do different things. I love also frisbee golfing. That's one of the big things I like. I recall it frolfing. Um, frisbee golfing is fun. I love doing that. Um, I love golfing in general, real golfing. Um, definitely fun to do. Anything outside I love doing. Like we have a lot of, um, I live in Wisconsin, so we have a lot of nature around us, different um, uh, natural um, sort of areas you can go to and just enjoy sort of the uh, the beauty of of the world we live in so I think like just nature nature preserves or um, uh, What am I trying to say? Um, uh, state parks things like that and um, Just things like that getting outside enjoying the weather biking. I like biking. I go to we have like a couple trails around here um, I'll do so um, That's a good question. I need to get out and do different things more and try to try to adventure out of my my comfort zone a little bit I think a little bit more and do some different things so something I've thought about doing is like jujitsu I've really thought about that in the past I think that would be fun just not only for the discipline side of it but also just the the technique itself to be able to have that self-defense aspect but um, I don't know that's a good question um, workout ideas from someone who doesn't go to the gym or doesn't want to go to the gym um, I would suggest you email me at joegianklum at hotmail.com and I will send you a free at-home workout routine. Um, no, but seriously, if you email me, I'll send you a free at-home workout routine. But uh, um, my point is with that, there is so many different options you can do with absolutely no equipment at all. That workout routine I'll send you for free will have workouts you can do absolutely no equipment. And there also is some options for a small amount of equipment, things like a band, um, over the door pull up bar and then also just a pair of dumbbells like a small to medium set of dumbbells to your sort of strength level and then also I recommend like a foam roller and that's just for your overall just health there's tons of things you can do with a foam roller but if you have any of those things or you don't have them that's fine you can definitely benefit from the workout routine anyways um, so seriously so if you have questions 
I would get that workout routine for me and then ask them after that because that gives you a good foundation to start with. Also, I would say anything you can do body weight, so like push-ups, chin-ups, um, with an over-the-door pull-up bar because those are super cheap, you can get them at like Goodwill even. Um, uh, banded stuff, if you can buy one band, there's so many different things you can do with bands. Um, Body weight stuff is the go-to though, I would say. Running, um, you can walk, you can literally just do things that are basic around your house. I mean, clean. Um, if you don't want to work out, you don't have to. I can definitely tell you that in a, in a specific working out sort of manner, which you would consider working out. You can walk around the block with your dog. You can um, uh, do tons of things. Like I said, go on hikes, what I was talking about earlier. Do things like that. Spend some time with your significant other going walking around town. Um, spend the day at like the farmer's market walking around different things like that are going to be a big way you can really benefit from a lot of sort of um caloric burn with you really not even knowing it and that's the best sort of way to do it so um yeah i hope that helps but for real email me for the for the at-home routine <laughs> uh so next question what is what day is ideal to have a cheat meal how does one put himself out there in the fitness industry so Two different questions here. First question, what is the ideal day to have a cheat meal? Like I said, I'm not really a big proponent of um, cheat meals. Like I don't like that word. I think it gives you a bad connotation of eating foods that maybe might be unhealthier or in my case, I like to say less nutritious um, because that's really it. It's not unhealthy, it's less nutritious. Um, yeah, there might be some ingredients in it which aren't good for your overall health or just well-being, but at the same time, to think that you're never gonna eat those is kind of asinine, and you really need to think about, okay, if I do have this in moderation, is this really gonna be that big of a deal, um, or am I making it a bigger deal by basically kind of depriving myself of it completely um, from my life. So what I like to do is balance it out. Like I said, flexible dieting is essentially that where you're not eating bullshit all the time. You're not eating Reese's peanut butter cups. You're not eating, um, like all this crap and then just having protein shakes to hit your protein. That's not it at all. It's an 80, 20 sort of mindset. 80% of the time you got to be dialed in wholesome, nutritious foods, hitting your protein, hitting fruits and veggies for the day. Um, but at the end of the day, you can enjoy things that aren't, like I said, gonna be what you'd consider clean, um, or some might consider a cheat meal. So what I would say is, what works best for that, if you really wanna be practical with it, um, before a big day of, of exercise, you wanna have that cheat meal. Um, and that would be the best answer I can give you to your direct question. But in my case, like I said, just eat those things that you like, be smart about it, and know that you have to budget it in for your day and your week, and just know that you can't do that every day and you gotta be smart. Um, you got to eat like an adult is what I like to say. Honestly, that's that's pretty much it. You got to be smart about it, but know that you can have things that maybe are, are quote unquote dirty or not clean foods. Um, but um, but yeah, hopefully that makes sense. If you do have a huge amount of exercise like planned for the week, you have a big squat day, um, something where you're going to be burning more calories and you know it, then yeah, have that meal beforehand or have it on that day before your workout, depending on what type of person you are and how you like to structure that. But um, that would be the best bet. Otherwise, like I said, don't stigmatize foods like that. There's no reason to, and it just doesn't do you any good in the long term. How does one put himself out there in the fitness industry? Um, so what I would say with that is you need to just start. There's so many different things out there now as far as platforms, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, you have friends who want to know and want to learn, but the thing about it is you need to be able to understand that you literally putting yourself out there and making yourself known that you're doing whatever it is you're doing, whether that's in fitness, whether that's in um, videography, this is another thing I do, um, you need to make sure people know that you do that. So in order to do that, you need to just start posting about it. So post about your experiences, post about the things that you know and you've learned. Um, and don't step out of your out of your your realm of what you actually know. Don't don't overstep that because people can see through the bullshit. But be honest and be be sharing and be willing to share your experiences and what you've learned um, along the way because that's what's going to allow you to have people like I said become aware of what you're doing. And so I guess it really depends on your plan and really what you want to do with within the fitness industry um, specifically. Uh, but from there, you just really got to take the steps to get there. If it's becoming a personal trainer, well then find the gym that you want to work at 
and develop the skills you need to do that, whether that's getting a certification or whether that's learning about your own body and learning about the ways you need to kind of honestly um, uh, just enhance your own ability to help someone reach their goals. Um, and then from there, take course of action and, and make that happen um, and learn along the way and be always willing to learn. So, um, but the big thing about it nowadays, especially in social media, if that's what you're really f referring to, it's got to be consistent posting, be yourself, um, and just do it. Really, this is a big thing. So you got to start. You got to start somewhere. Whether it's with your iPhone, there's tons of access nowadays. You, there's no excuse not to be able to take some pictures or take videos of your training, take videos of your food, talk about it. Um, that's really the big thing. So, and then from there, reach out to people, start taking on clients for free or for very cheap, and start learning how to how to really, like I said, get some of the results they're looking for. Um, so that would be my big thing. Segwaying off of that, another thing that kind of goes along with that is why did I start? Um, and I'm going to leave this for another full video because I think this could be a full video and I think it could actually be a series. But briefly why I started is I was going to play college football out of high school and that was pretty much my plan. Um, I was going to go to a four year college um, or really I was going to go for five years because I was going to gray shirt which is essentially like red shirting basically giving me a fifth year of eligibility um, to play football for five years. Um, and essentially... Um, things kind of fell through. Um, there was a lot that kind of happened, which I'll touch on, like I said, in another video. But from there, basically what we did was I came home, started going to community college, and saved money that way instead of going to that four-year college. And what I did was I stayed in shape just basically in case I wanted to go back and play football anywhere. And that's when I started getting people reaching out to me in regards to my training and how I was staying in shape, how I was getting the results I was and I started to think that hmm, maybe this could be something and I could make something of this. And then it kind of took off from there. That's when I started my Instagram, started posting on social media, started my YouTube channel thereafter. And um, like I said, I'll go more in depth about this another time. But I think that this is definitely a good topic for a lot of people to benefit from, especially because I get this question a lot and um, just how to get started. Um, like I said, it kind of segues off the last question, but um, I'll definitely touch on this more. Alright guys, so the last question here is how do you know how many calories you should take in every day? So the loose and easy way to figure this out is to multiply your body weight times 11 or 12. And what you're going to get by multiplying your body weight by 11 or 12 is your loose estimate of your maintenance level of calories. This might be different for someone who has a little bit higher of caloric burn during their daily job, someone like a construction worker, personal trainer on their feet a lot. But for someone who's more sedentary, this is a perfect way to go about it. From there, you're going to get your maintenance level of calories from that, that multiplication. What you're going to do then is put yourself in either a deficit or a surplus of calories, depending upon your goals, or you can stay right at that maintenance. But that's going to be a loose way to kind of find a strategic number to go off of at the beginning. What you really want to do to find a true maintenance, because like I said, that's just a loose estimate, is actually weigh yourself in every morning for about two weeks along with tracking your caloric intake and adjust both of those as needed. So basically adjust your caloric intake as needed and you don't really have to adjust your weigh-ins but consistently stay, stay on track with your weigh-ins and adjust that caloric intake until those weigh-ins are getting consistent and you're staying at about the same maintenance level of calories and you're staying at the consistent same weight because when you're at that sort of happy medium that's when you know that's your maintenance level of calories because you're going to stay at the same exact sort of body composition you're at right now when you're at maintenance so hopefully that makes sense but the short route is to, like i said just multiply your body weight times 11 or 12 um 12 would be someone who's a little bit more active maybe on their feet a little bit more 11 would be someone who's a little bit more sedentary pretty much sitting all day um and you kind of can adjust accordingly because everyone's going to have a different metabolism and that's why there's not just one basic way to go about it and that's why those calculators are a little bit hard to go off of because it does give you a baseline but i can tell you right off the bat those calculators at maintenance for my weight um, and my height and all that sort of thing will have me losing weight. So my maintenance is naturally higher than those calculators put me at. So that's where you got to have that adjustment period and allow yourself to actually track and actually track your weigh-ins and find a true maintenance that way and then go about your goals. Um, but a lot of people don't like to wait that long so I like to give them at least some sort of a structure to go off of which is where 11 or 12, um, sometimes 13 or 14 will come in if it's someone who's a little bit, like I said, has a more demanding sort of day-to-day -day task. So. Hopefully that helps. 
And I lied, there's actually one more question here. What do you do on a holiday? So what are my eating habits, workouts, so on. So, and what they mean by holiday is vacation. So my, recommenda my recommendation on vacation is to honestly, like don't worry about working out, don't worry about your diet. Like I don't mean just totally binge on everything, but what I'm saying is don't track, don't feel like you need to track. If you want to, you can, but I don't recommend it. Enjoy your vacation. If you like working out so much that you want to go to the gym and find the resort gym like myself, do it. But if it feels like it's draining on you and it's not having like sort of a, a benefit to your vacation, then don't do it. Do the things you want. Do the things that you're spending the money on to go on vacation and enjoy yourself. When it comes when you come back and you get back to things, that's when you can get dialed in again. So if you're in the middle of a diet, well then maybe don't plan a vacation around that and maybe make your kind of make your make your vacation and your diet structured in a way that's going to benefit each other. And if you do have something come up, well then know that you're going to need to enjoy yourself because otherwise it's not worth it in my opinion. So my biggest recommendation is be enjoy yourself first and foremost, be mindful of your goals in the long run. And really, if you can, if you can come back at least just maintaining the weight you're at, that's awesome. Um, and a lot of times you're on vacation, you're going to be moving anyways, you're going to be on your feet a lot. So that being said, it's going to benefit you because you're on your feet, you're moving, you don't have to worry so much um, about the working out because you're going to be burning more calories than you would um, if you're just sitting on your butt all day like you do normally probably when you're at home. So um, what I would say is enjoy yourself number one, be mindful of your goals, but at the same time and work out if you want and enjoy yourself, but if it's draining on the vacation, don't let that happen and just like I said, focus on the enjoyment of the vacation and the reason why you're on vacation in the first place. So. There's always room to diet when you come back. Um, there's one more question. Qdoba or Chipotle? Qdoba for sure. I've only had a Chipotle once. Horrible experience. I don't want to have it again, but I will have it again because I think I do have a subjective view on it since I've only had it once, and I think it just might have been a bad experience. But, like I said, Qdoba would be the go-to right now. Sorry for any of you Chipotle lovers out there. It is what it is. Anyways, guys, talk to you soon. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a little bit longer. Um, if you guys enjoy that, though, hopefully you do. Um, please leave a comment below. Leave some more questions below. I'll do this again. Um, and leave a like for sure if you guys did enjoy it and if you're still watching. Comment below, Anklem Athletics, hashtag Anklem Athletics, something or other. Put, put hashtag Anklem Athletics with another question if you're still watching. How about that? Yeah, that sounds good. Anyways, guys, talk to you soon. And, yeah, have a good day. Have a good night, whatever time you're watching this. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace out.